Building your self-image. Hi guys, my name is Christine Loveridge and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today we are talking about building a better self-image for yourself. So today's going to be a bit of a different video, different style. Um, if you do like this kind of video, then please let me know by leaving a like on this video and perhaps also commenting, just letting me know that you like it. So let's go and have a look at these slides. Okay, so building your self-image. Um, in this particular uh, lesson, course, uh, you'll need a pen and a paper. Um, to take notes. So in this slide, let's have a look at what we are going to be going through today. The building blocks to a strong self-image. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is self-care. The second is a strong mindset. Number three is goals for yourself and others. And four, some practical exercises that you can do after you have watched this video. Okay, so let's get into the first slide which is self-care. And the quote I have with this is, I have never found anyone who fulfilled my needs, a lonely place to be, and so I learned to depend on me, which is a quote from Whitney Houston. Now, what I really like about this quote and the song that it's from, which is the greatest love of all, is the simple true fact that no one in this world is ever going to save you. Your government's not going to save you. Your friends and family are not going to save you. If you have a life that you're not happy of, that you're not proud of, then you need to be the one that makes those changes. Um, if you are always relying upon external things like a government, like the people in your life to make you happy, um, you're going to fall short. You're going to end up miserable because no external circumstances are ever guaranteed. So if you want to better your life in some way, then you need to be the one to do that be the person that you can depend on. Because if you depend on other people, remember that other people are humans and they will make mistakes. So when they do make a mistake, like for example, they're in a bad mood or they're mad at you, if you are relying on them for your happiness, when they change their mood, when they get angry or upset, it's going to ruin your day. So you need to be able to depend on yourself. Simple as that. So let's get into the first point, which is personal hygiene. One of the things about having a low self-image, sometimes people even have struggles with their hygiene. I know this because I have experienced this. Uh, 10 years ago, I was lucky if I even brushed my teeth. I just couldn't be bothered to brush my teeth. Some days I would even be lucky if I had a shower because I had such a poor self-image. I felt completely and utterly worthless. That's something that I went through as a young teenager and as a young adult. Um, I'm now 28. Luckily, I do obviously take care of myself now, but there was a point in my life where I didn't and it all came down to my self-image. So if you want to build your self-image and you are also struggling with these kinds of things, then you must first start with your personal hygiene. So that could be just making sure that you have a shower a day. It could be making sure that you brush your teeth twice a day. If you are really struggling in life, just start with those very simple things. So the next point is exercise and nutrition. So if you have a poor self-image, it's very likely that you also suffer with poor nutrition and lack of exercise. So that's something that you need to work on. You need to make sure that you work, exercise your body, you work out, and you also eat the right things. Now, I'm not a nutritionist or a personal trainer, so you need to find you know, information from someone who want, who has the same body as you. There's someone out there probably who's the same height as you, probably someone out there that has the perfect body that you want to have. Um, then I would suggest that you go and find someone who has got the results that you want and find out what they do, find out what they eat, to find out how they work out, and then emulate that, and you will get similar results. Self-acceptance. Now, yes, to, to self-care for yourself is to accept yourself. So if you are overweight, admit it to yourself. Admit that you need help. Admit that you need, um, that this is who you are. So go and look in the mirror and just say, just look at yourself and just say, okay, this 
it's who I am um, and I need to obviously there's things I need to improve but right now in this moment this is who I am so accept yourself self-acceptance also means um, admitting to things that you like it was um, in a book called the six pillars of self-esteem where I first heard this concept and basically the author gives a story of this man who's watching uh, a, a movie with his friend and when they come out of the movie he sees that his friend didn't really like the movie and so um, he says when his friend says oh I didn't really like this movie he also agrees and says oh yeah I didn't really like it either when actually he really liked it and it deeply moved him so if you like a certain type of music and you like a certain kind of film um, don't be afraid to admit that if everyone else seems to be disliking it be proud of who you are and what you like and dislike and don't be afraid to speak your truth and say what it is that you like and dislike don't try to like things just to fit in and you actually hate it this is something that i used to do as well um i used to say to people that i liked the same music that they did in order for us to have a bond and to be friends because i was just so um uh i was so I was so longing for self-acceptance but because of that I wasn't actually accepting myself I was so busy trying to please others and to get them to like me and at the end basically what happened is I didn't end up being true to myself so you must be true to yourself and accept yourself uh, accept the person that you are right now and you know you don't have to like who you are right now because you can change it but you should at least accept the person that you are so the next point is the content that you consume so if you are watching negative things so let's say you're always watching the news okay obviously on the news there are lots of neg negative things out there and the, just remember the point of the media and the news is to get you to watch so they get ads and everything like that or so they can sell newspapers so they can get clicks so you need to take whatever you watch when you do watch the news with a pinch of salt because it might not always be accurate also one of the things that I personally stopped doing was watching horror movies I don't really like anymore watching anything that is too uh, too destructive because it does affect the way that you feel about yourself. I noticed that whenever I watched a movie where there's a lot of negativity in it, whether it be horror or whether it be just a negative sort of story in general, um, I noticed that my mood would dip because of it. So watch things that are positive, that are lighthearted, that are perhaps even educational, um, just to help you, um, strengthen you rather than weaken you. Now, of course, it's okay to watch these things, but just make sure it's not the thing that you are predominantly consuming. So the next point is boundaries. So obviously, if you know a bunch of people, then you need to have boundaries. You need to be able to stand up for yourself. Um, this is something that I was really poor at doing. I had a very hard time at saying no to people because I didn't want to offend them or upset them. Um, because I was just afraid that the consequences would be so much worse if I said no. So what something that you can do to respect your boundaries. So if you feel like someone's getting too personal or they've said something to you that is mean, that you don't like, um, don't be afraid to get up and walk out of the room or tell them something like, look, I only like to be talked to nicely. Um, just let me know if you want to start. Just let me know at some point in the future if you're going to start doing that and apologize. And then maybe we can be friends again. But right now I'm just going to leave this situation and walk away. Way. And if you do all of those things, and if you achieve all of these things, then you will be on your way to a better self-image by caring for yourself. So the next slide is a strong mindset. And the quote here is by David Goggins, and it goes, Only you can master your mind, which is what it takes to live a bold life filled with accomplishments most people consider beyond their capability. So what are some of the things you can do to develop a stronger mindset? So the first one is do something each day to push past your comfort zone. So basically do something every day. That kind of sucks, but you know you need to do. Uh, one of the most powerful ways to do this is through actual exercise by um, exerting your body in some way. And obviously not overly exerting, but enough to go past what you've done before. So let's say you've worked out uh, 30 minutes a day for five years try and go for the next try and do 35 minutes or 40 minutes just try and do a little bit more each day and each time you exercise or try a new technique try a more difficult technique 
Um, usually when you watch a workout video, they have easier ways to do certain exercises. Um, so don't try to do some of the more difficult exercises, the more difficult um, positions. Um, and see if you can get better that way. Something else you could do to push past your comfort zone, let's say if you're someone who's very intellectual, is to study harder, study for an extra 30 minutes. Um, study, you know, study the things that you are really struggling with um, because in order to get a pass on a test, then obviously you need to know all of the tests very well and the kind of questions that you're gonna ask that are going to be asked. So if there are some questions and some areas of this course that you're taking, if you're, you know, if you're a student in some way, um, then start studying things that you know you're not very good at. Start looking at those because you need to strengthen your weaknesses as well as strengthening the things that you're already quite strong at. So, but the point is, is you need to push past your comfort zone. Do something every day that sucks. So the next point is emotional independence. Learn how to be happy on your own. This goes back to the external factors. If you are always relying on external things to make you happy, you are going to be miserable. So you need to learn to be happy on your own. This is something that I discovered. You know, I actually really enjoy being on my own because I can entertain myself and I can do things that uh, help me grow in some way. So if I've got like a few hours to myself, um, then I read a book, or I listen to an audiobook, or I exercise. I enjoy my alone time because I know how to make it productive. I'm not just sitting there on my phone and scrolling through social media for hours and hours and hours, or, or anything like that. When I'm alone, I use that time wisely to help strengthen myself. And because of that, I've learned to be very happy when I am on my own, doing my own thing. Um, if you feel uncomfortable being alone and you feel like you always need to be around people, this is something that you really do need to work on. Otherwise, you are emotionally dependent on other people to satisfy your boredom um, and, satisfy, and satisfy your emotional needs. And you're never going to get that from other people. Um, you may get it sometimes. You, someone may do something nice for you and it makes you feel really good and makes you feel happy, but you shouldn't rely on it. That's the point. You can't rely on it because if you, can, if you don't, if you rely on it, you are not emotionally independent. So the next thing to a stronger mindset is self-discipline. In order for you to get better at working out, in order for you to get better at studying or whatever it is that you're doing, um, then obviously you need to develop self-discipline because at the beginning, if you're starting out a workout regime, shall we say, and I, I use exercise because it's something that we should all be doing, right? Um, if you haven't exercised in a year, and let's say New Year's comes along and you say, well, I'm going to exercise every single day now for an hour for, the, for 2021, for the rest of the whole year or something, it's very unlikely that you're actually going to uh, uh, execute that and have the discipline to do that every single day, to work out an hour each day. Start small. Okay, now I'm not gonna hear, I'm not gonna sit here and say that what you can and can't do, but if you know that you that you've perhaps you've tried this kind of thing before and it's never worked out, let's say you've done it for about two weeks and then you give up, um, then you may have to start small. So for the first month, just say that you're going to do 20 minutes of exercise every day. And 20 minutes sounds a lot more manageable than an hour. Okay. Um, and then after that month has gone by, then perhaps you can up it to 30 minutes and then the month after that to 40 minutes and then work your way up until you get to that hour. Okay, so self-discipline is important, but you need to also remain consistent as well. So discipline yourself to do at least 20 minutes and then after that, be disciplined enough to do more. Um, but getting consistent is very, very important when it comes to doing the daily grind and the things that you need to do day in and day out that you are probably right now thinking of wanting and thinking about what you should be doing because and it's good that you're thinking about it keep on thinking about it because if you keep on thinking about it eventually you'll get to it but you need to be disciplined to take some action so because some days motivation is just not going to be there motivation is very fickle okay it's when you start doing the things you need to do on days that you don't like doing it as well that's when you start to see more and better results, when you don't rely on motivation, when you use your self-discipline. So the next slide is goals for yourself and others. And the quote goes like this, you will get all you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. Okay, so the point here, 
So the first point here, start achieving manageable goals and then gradually create bigger ones. This follows on from the last point, which was about self-discipline, okay? So you obviously don't want to exert yourself too much. You obviously want to have goals that are challenging and excite you and inspire you, but you don't want them to be so grand that you can't achieve them. So let's say you're like, oh, I want to achieve a million uh, a million pounds or a million dollars in a year, and yet you're not even earning a thousand, okay? Obviously that's going to be too much. Now again, I don't wanna say what you can and can't do, but if you know that you can't achieve this, if you know in your heart that you can't achieve this, then try something a little bit smaller. Try um, going to earn two grand a month instead of the grand or whatever that I'm earning now. Try and do something that's a bit more manageable, that's something that you know that is within your capability, but it also pushes past your comfort zone. Once you've achieved the smaller goals, then you can uh, you know, go up to bigger and more grander goals. So make sure you're very sensible with your goals, but make sure that they do also inspire you and do push you past your comfort zone. So the next point, which is more about the others in what I've said, um, is and that is to give and add value to others. Now, you don't have to give money if you don't have enough money, um, but you can at least add value to other people's lives. And you can do this just by giving a smile to people or just helping someone more. Um, so an example of this could be someone that you know, perhaps um, uh, someone you know is really down in the dumps, why don't you send them a happy a video about something that might make them laugh or something that you know might help them. It could be a book, you could send them a book um, that's helped you in some way. Um, just try and give and add value to others. You don't have to give money, you don't even have to give your time if you don't want to, but you can give them a resource or something that might help them. So this is the last slide and we're going to be talking about the practical exercises that you can now do. So the quote here is the major in the major reason for goal setting is for what it makes of you to accomplish it. What it makes of you will always be far greater value than what you get. So the whole point of making goals is not to achieve the goal because once you've achieved the goal then you'll probably need to find a new goal because it, the, like they always say, you know, it's, it's not the it's not the destination that matters, it's the journey. So you always want to be making sure that you have new goals once you've achieved other goals because that's what keeps you growing, that's what keeps you learning and that's what will keep you motivated and will keep you more fulfilled because you know, there's only so many mar margaritas you can drink on a beach. Okay, after a week or so of drinking margaritas on a beach, you'll probably want to go and do something and make something of yourself. So even if you do in the, in the end make up a lot of money in your life, um, there's only so much you can relax. So at some point you'll get an itch to want to do something else and something better or bigger or grander or different. Um, you can't just sit around all day. Not a lot of people are happy when they are sitting around all day. Practical exercises are number one, write down five ways you are going to work on your self care. So this is obviously about um, the, the first slide. Um, so here we did things about personal hygiene, exercise, nutrition, self-acceptance, the content you consume, boundaries. So write a goal or something that you're going to do to help with your self-care. Uh, preferably perhaps one for each of these categories that I talked about in this slide. Okay. So number two is do something that sucks today. So this could be exercising, studying, etc. that pushes you past your comfort zone. So just aim to do more today than you did yesterday, if that's a more simpler way of putting it. Um, so if you did exercise, yes, if you didn't exercise yesterday, then exercise today. If you did exercise yesterday, then perhaps uh, do something uh, more strenuous today. Um, obviously don't hurt yourself and do it safely, but you get the point, right? Um, number three is make a manageable goal for the week and do at least one kind slash valuable thing for another person. So your goal for the week, if you're a salesperson, might be making a sale, or it might be finishing reading a book, um, or a, or it could be you know making sure that you work out for the rest of the week, that you do five days of exercise or something, um, or and the thing that you could do for another person might be sending them an article that might help them, uh, or it could be giving money, you know, if you are wealthy enough to give money. So anyway, I hope this video has helped you. If, again, if you like this kind of video, then please let me know and I'll do more of these kinds of videos. Uh, please subscribe. Um, and if you'd like help with me personally on a specific situation, because obviously these videos are very generalized, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com shop. And I shall talk to you guys again 
very soon. Goodbye, guys.